Hi, this is Teo from Pucklebox.com. Today I'm going to review the Noodleless Ahab fountain pen. This pen is marketed with a flexible steel nib, so today I'm going to see just how flexible it is. I bought this pen on Amazon USA for around 20 to 30 US dollar, so this is not a very expensive pen. You can also find this pen sold on many other websites. It comes in different colors. I bought the one that is a clear demonstrator so that I can see the ink that is inside. Later on, I will fill up with ink. Uh, this is the body. It's quite a big pen, relatively speaking, compared to um, other fountain pens, but it still holds up quite comfortably. Let's take a look at the cap. I actually don't really like the cap because uh, I don't like the clip, how the clip looks like. This is a curved clip on this side and also if you look at the front here it's curved on both sides as well and but other than that um, no not much complaints it does what it does after i used the pen for maybe a few months i started to notice some scratches on the casing uh, on the cap on the body not too big of a deal anyway this is not a very expensive pen i read online that they say that the pen is made out of some cellulose um, derivative and it is actually biodegradable but the build quality this is actually quite hard so chances are it's not going to biodegrade in this um, generation this is the pen the nib the grip and the body and it's very easy to dismantle this pen so this is the body and this is the piston filler. You can see, this is the piston filler. And you can also dismantle the feet and the nib. Just basically twist very slowly and pull it out. And you get something like this. This feet, I was told, um, it's made out of some abonite. There's one slit in front of the feet and also one at the back. And this is the steel nib. Noodleless ink hole, one single slit here and there's no breather hole at the back. When you want to put back the feet and the nib, make sure you align them properly first. Then press down hard so that they don't move and use uh, some force to push it back into the grip section. I think there is some sort of a crack in my grip section. Not sure if you can see it. So there's this uh, crack here and this crack here. It's on the inner side of the grip. I'm not sure if they are caused by the side of the nib, but I uh, use that to align my uh, metal nib so yep now it's back in just like that let me check the alignment looks okay and now I can fix on the piston there is a rubber ring here so you should actually tighten this tight so that when the ink is being filled it doesn't come out from this opening I'm using noodleless ink today. This is ink that is waterproof and dry, depending on the type of paper you use and depending on your luck. I find that it's not always waterproof. So you might have to use the plunger a few times to get the ink into the ink reservoir here. So it holds a decent amount of ink. Let me clean this pen up and show you some strokes. One thing I really like about the demonstrator body is it allows you to see how much ink you are left in the pen so that you can refill it before you run out of ink. Let me show you some thin and thick lines. If you draw very quickly, you can get thin lines like this. The lines are also not very dark. The nib is quite smooth on the paper though. And if you draw a bit slower, you can get darker lines. This is 
probably a fine knit, fine to a medium knit. And if you press down hard, then you can get thicker lines like this. This also deposits more ink. So if you want to use this pen with watercolor, you have to wait a much longer time for the ink to dry before you can apply watercolor. And also, when the ink is still wet, um, try to be careful not to smear the ink with your hand because they don't dry very fast and noodleless ink they really don't dry very fast so if you want thin and thick lines you can practice so is this a flexible pen well it does flex when you press down but it's definitely not as flexible compared to those vintage flexible pen or other flex pens that I have. So this is quite thin for me. Let me show you a different pen. This is the Pelican M200 that I use. This is not marketed with a flex nib, but it can give you some variation in terms of strokes as well. This is a fine nib. And if I press down hard, I can get a thicker line as well. So um, not too much different compared to the Noodleless Ahab but the Ahab gives me a thinner line so if you want a wider variation uh, perhaps the Ahab is a good pen for all of you for this quick sketch I'm just going to um, try and maximize the line thickness so that you can see the variation the sun is casting the shadow from right to left so for all those lines that are going to be on the left side I will use much thicker lines for example in this case here I'm just going to draw a much thicker line down and here so you have to make a quite conscious decision to put in thin and thick lines because the pen is actually not that flexible it's flexible but it's not that flexible I actually have a Namiki Falcon pen that has been modified with Spencerian um, modification and that pen is really very flexible uh, what I mean by that is you can just apply a bit pr of pressure and you can get the lines to vary in thickness very very easily but not so with this uh, steel knit pen so here I will press down harder for the thicker lines thin line here and a thick line here so there are some stairs here I will just use the thin lines some trees at the back perhaps I want to use a bit of a thin and a bit of a thick line so let's lamp pose here and go back to the thin and thick lines I like to use um, this type of pen for trees because I like to draw thin and thick for the leaves I think they provide a very nice variation so perhaps for the door, I might want to cross hatch the glass area just to make it much darker. If I want to use the thicker lines, I can do so as well for hatching, but I have to go a bit slower. So you can get um, some sort of variation. It's, it makes the sketch look a bit more interesting when you have thin and thick lines in the same sketch. Overall, the performance of this pen is quite good. The nib is smooth on the paper. This is quite good for drawing. I would not consider this a flexible nib though because you do have to press down harder. You do have to make a conscious decision to press down to get the thicker lines. But if you do, you are rewarded with 
line variation that can make your sketch look more interesting. Um, overall, build quality is good and you can dismantle it very easily to clean. The design of the pen is nice, I just don't like the clip. I think overall it's quite a good pen that is value for money. Uh, one downside of this pen other than the clip that I don't like is the smell of the pen. It has a very strong smell, especially when the pen is new. Uh, I've had this pen for probably one or two years. The smell has faded away, but sometimes I do get that smell if I put a pen too close to my nose for whatever reason. Um, but the smell takes a long time to go away. So um, yeah, that's one significant downside of this particular pen. Uh, but for drawing purposes, I think it's good. If you want to buy this pen for calligraphy, then you would have to ask yourself, do you prefer a really flexible pen or a somewhat inflexible pen? Because if you really want a flexible pen, then this pen is not that suitable for calligraphy work because um, you have to press down quite hard. Yeah. That's all for my review today. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below. I will also post a link to uh, my text review of this pen and also in that text review, you can see some of uh, the other sketches that I've drew with the uh, nib. That's all, see you in the next video. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so for more art product reviews, sketching tips and tutorials. Bye.